Hello, I'm going to go through three connectivity methods in this video which you might use to connect up to the internet. First of all, ADSL. ADSL stands for Asymmetric Digital Subscriber Line. Now, whether or not you should learn that is something I'll leave to you. I personally don't think it's too important what it stands for. The issue is these acronyms do get quite mixed up. There are loads of acronyms to know in networking. So learning the acronym itself can be useful to separate the different ones. But the key thing to know is what it does. So ADSL is there to provide internet, which we're going to call data. When I say data, that means internet. So you're able to access websites, able to send emails, able to use VoIP, things like that, right? This internet provided over telephone lines. So the telephone network, we'll talk about in a couple of videos time, we're thinking the kind of telephone towers you see in the street, those cabinets you might see at the end of your road, those sort of fairly old fashioned systems, ADSL are running through them. Now, the word asymmetric means imbalanced, right? Something which is symmetric is equal either side, asymmetric is imbalanced. And the imbalance is that ADSL networks, in fact, most networks used for internet have got a faster download speed than upload speed. If you run a speed test right now, you'll find that you get a much higher download speed than upload speed. This is because overall you're downloading more than you are uploading. It's just uh, the way these networks are designed. They're designed to put more power, put more technology into downloading than uploading because uploading is less common and is not as time critical in many cases. Now normally ADSL uses copper wires because the telephone network consists of just copper wires. In theory it could be fiber but normally it's just copper. Uh, that's why usually it's slower than a fully fiber network which are quicker. So if you've got fiber optic that's separate to ADSL. ADSL is usually just copper and if you live in a city or a big town you might not have ADSL but if you live in a countryside you may well have it. Um, every place in the UK pretty much has ADSL now not every place has fiber um, at the moment. So a fun thing to say about ADSL is that both data and voice can be transferred simultaneously. Now I said data is basically internet, voice is a phone call, right? A telephone line is used to call people up using a landline and so you can call somebody up and use a laptop at the same time on ADSL. So despite using telephone lines you can do both. Now the reason this can be is because of a microfilter. A microfilter is a tiny device, it looks like this, you may have it in your house, you may not, I've got one in a box somewhere. A microfilter splits the data and the voice um, messages so that they can work at the same time. So microfilter splits up the two connections, data and voice, so that both can be sent and received at the same time. And the final device you need to have, which I mentioned many, many videos ago, is a modem. A modem converts between digital and analog signals. Your computer is digital, the telephone network is analog. And so the modem converts between the signals. Both of these devices are used to use ADSL. A second similar technology, which is actually older, is ISDN. ISDN stands for Integrated Services Digital Network. Again, how useful that is. I'll leave up to you. Now, like I say, this is an older alternative to ADSL, not really used that often, now being phased out. So the big companies like BT are no longer really thinking too much about it. ADSL is still used, but eventually I'm sure they'll get replaced eventually. So like ADSL, it will provide both data and voice messages simultaneously over again the telephone network. Not much else to say really, um, just to be clear again, by data, we mean internet. So if you're using your laptop or your phone or your desktop computer with a, a wired connection like this, you are potentially using ISDN or ADSL. Voice is like a landline, not your mobile network. If you've got a mobile phone, that'll be a separate cellular network, which we'll talk about in a couple of videos time. A third alternative, which none of us would have used, but is used is a lease line. So a lease line is not really a technology, it's more something you can do to a network. So ADSL, ISDN and fiber networks are using shared infrastructure. Even if you're paying for fiber, you're still using the same fiber cables as other people 
as your neighbors, right? All of your houses are connected up to one cabinet at the end of your road, it's all shared. And so this can be a security concern. Most messages are being encrypted and should be okay, but still, you know, things are public. But also more, perhaps importantly, because of widespread encryption, is performance. You might have noticed when it's the evenings, when it is a weekend, your internet speed might go down because many people are using the internet and because it's shared, you know, the, the ADSL, IDSDN and fiber lines are being shared, it means performance drops because of it. And so to get around this, you can lease a line. If you are leasing something, you are renting it, you are borrowing it, you're paying for it only for a short time. A lease line is a rented connection only used by you. And so what you can do is pay an internet company to give you a permanent connection and you pay a, set, a certain amount every month to be able to use it. So the idea is you can connect up maybe two offices, maybe two campuses with a lease line to expand your network, but not sharing at all. So in terms of security, it's really good because only you are using it and performance will be really, really consistent because it's never gonna drop because of somebody else. Only you and your company can use the lease line because you are owning it for a short period of time. But to be more accurate, it is owned permanently by another company. You are just renting it, you're just borrowing it. 